بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن دعوة أهل السنة دعوة أهل الحديث دعوة السلفيين دعوة أهل الأثر تقوم على التربية والتصفية تقوم على التربية والتصفية رمضان مط مكثرة forgiveness رمضان مط رحمة رمضان مط generosity رمضان مط that Allah تبارك وتعالى accepts the tawbah of the servants the month that Allah Taala blesses the servants. We are in need of our Ramadan to correct ourselves, for we have forgotten Allah Taala for the majority of the year. To correct ourselves, for we've been neglectful. To correct ourselves, for we're not upon the remembrance of Allah. To correct ourselves, because our hearts have gotten hard. Some hearts are dead. Some hearts are sick. Some hearts are stone cold. Some hearts are black, getting no benefit whatsoever. Some hearts are so bad and so ill that they see a good as a moon card, as an evil, and they see an evil as a good. Things are totally out of whack. Things are not as they should be. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan because our connection with Allah Taala is not correct. We need a Ramadan because we don't have any khushu or devotion in our salat. We need a Ramadan because our Quran has dust and is sitting on a shelf. We need a Ramadan because we never read the books of Sunnah. We need a Ramadan because we don't fast. And if we fast physically without food or drink, we don't fast with our eyes by lowering them and our tongue by not slandering and our tongue by not lying and our tongue by not backbiting. Why we need a Ramadan? We need a Ramadan to get ourselves back in order, to work for the hereafter, to connect ourselves to Allah Taala. We need a Ramadan because the relationship brother to brother and sister to sister is in a miserable condition. We need a Ramadan because we have su'udhan, bad thoughts about one another. We need a Ramadan because we're in a zulm, injustice to one another. We need a Ramadan because there's backbiting, there's envy, there's jealousy, there's slander. We need a Ramadan because we're sick, because we're ill. We need a Ramadan because we don't believe in the promise of Allah, tabarakwa ta'ala, or if we do, we don't implement it. We need a Ramadan because it's time for us to change and become something better than we are now. We need a Ramadan because that's the only thing that's going to get us together. We need a Ramadan because we don't have unity. There's no brotherhood. We need a Ramadan because there's no respect for elders. We need a Ramadan because there's no respect for experience. We need a Ramadan because there's no real love between us. We need a Ramadan. A Ramadan full of love and the mercy of Allah subhanahu ta'ala. A Ramadan where we come in like in a clinic or a hospital trying to solve our illnesses, trying to come up out of there without that disease that we came in with, trying to be better than we went in with. We need a Ramadan. Look around you. Look to your right. Look to your left. Look to your front and look behind you. You'll say, we need a Ramadan. The sisters aren't covering properly. We need a Ramadan. Brothers and sisters are mixing. We need a Ramadan. Talking on phones and on internet. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan. This is a mess. We're in a fix. We're in a bind. It's a problem. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan to get ourselves together. We need a Ramadan that we come in a masjid. And we face the Qibla. And we say Allah Akbar. And we stand in Qiyam a long time. And to those diseases, that filth. That sickness, that hardness of heart goes away. We need a Ramadan that reminds us of the hellfire. We need a Ramadan that tells us that we haven't been given a certificate that we're people of Jannah. We need a Ramadan that lets us know that we are servants of Allah Taala. And if we were to spend our whole life from the time we was born into Qiyama and Sajda, it would not be enough to thank Allah for His mercy and His grace and His blessings. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan and it's clear. If there's any fear of Allah left in the hearts, if there's any hope for the Jannah left in the heart, 
if there's any desire to change and to be better and to be righteous, to come to the level of ihsan, to come to the level, if you can't do that, of a mu'min, to be zaki, fearing Allah, you know you need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan, a month of Tawbah. We need a Ramadan, a month of Makfirah. We need a Ramadan to correct our behavior. We need a Ramadan to correct the differences and the difficulties and the envy and the jealousy and the bad relations between one another. We need a Ramadan to understand that we have been committing injustice to one another. And that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Dhulm, injustice, Dhulumat, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, will be changed physically into darknesses on the Day of Judgment. We need a Ramadan to understand that hadith. Fear the dua of the one who's been done injustice. For there's not between Allah and that person making that invocation, that person making that supplication, that person who has been done injustice, there's no veil between that person and Allah. That dua is immediately accepted. And many of us are wondering why things aren't going right. Why I'm tripping over this and falling into that? Slipping there and sliding here. Why I can't get ahead? Why I can't progress in my deen? Why I can't memorize this ayah? Why I can't understand this hadith? We may be living under the invocation, the answer for invocation of something that we used or abused or stepped over. We need a Ramadan. You know you need a Ramadan. I know I need a Ramadan. We know we need a Ramadan. We need to get ourselves together. We've been walling around in filth. We've been having our hearts around the low matters. We need for our hearts to be around the throne of Allah. We need to think about the high matters, the high goals. We need to think about a Jannah. We need to hope for a Jannah. You're planning for marriage. You're planning for education. You're planning for a job. We need to plan for the Jannah. We need to prepare for a Jannah. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan. نَحْنُ فِي حَاجَةٍ مَا لِلْرَمَضَانِ We in severe need for Ramadan. So that we come in it, into Ramadan, repentful. We come in it, regretful. We come in it, realizing that we're weak and that we need Allah to to correct us. Realizing that we're wrong and we need Allah to to place us upon what is right. Realizing that we're weak and we need Allah to 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 grant us strength. We need a Ramadan. Ah, oh, yes. We need a Ramadan. We need nights of Tiyah. We need Dua and Sujood. We need the nights of Ramadan. We need tilawa of Qur'an. We need a Ramadan. When the last time have we listened to Qur'an? We need a Ramadan. When the last time have we recited Qur'an? We need a Ramadan. When the last time have we studied Qur'an? We need a Ramadan. When the last time have we implemented Qur'an? We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan. And this Ramadan may be our final, as one brother spoke. What is the guarantee? that this is not our final Ramadan. We have to come in it seriously. And we want to come out of it much better than we came in it. We want to come out of Ramadan with taqwa because that's the main reason why it was legislated. Oh, you believe fasting has been written upon you as it was for those before you so that what? You may gain taqwa, fear of Allah. If we had taqwa, our condition would be better than it is now. If we had taqwa, our relationships would be smoother. If we had taqwa, father to son who was Muslim, sister to brother who was Muslim, uncle, aunt, to niece, or nephew who's Muslim, husband or wife that are Muslims, the relationship would be better if it's based upon taqwa. And we can achieve taqwa through the month of Ramadan. I don't believe that our hearts are that hard. I don't believe that we can't change. I don't believe that cause some of us was taught hatred over the last 10 years 
we can't learn to love. And because we were taught deceit and deception, we can't learn to trust. I don't believe it. I don't believe that many of those brothers who have left circumstances physically but have the teachings and the behavior that they had while they was up there that they can't change. That just as they physically remove their bodies from a fitna and physically remove their bodies from a mistake, physically remove their bodies from foolishness that their hearts have to follow. ta'ala, their hearts have to follow. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan to be as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. That he was the most generous. He was generous in general and he was more general in the month of Ramadan. It's like a wind spending, giving to his right, giving to his left, giving in, giving in front of him, giving behind him, giving. Anyone came to him, he gave. He gave without them asking. We need a Ramadan. We need to inculcate these qualities. We need to control our desires. We need to control our tongue. We need to control our limbs. We need to learn self-discipline. We need to learn control. We need to control our tongues. We need to control our anger. We need a Ramadan. And how we come in that Ramadan so that it doesn't become something of habit, something that's just tradition, something that we go in and we're more despicable, just as despicable as we were when we went in, we have to change. We have to change. We have to change our condition. We have to change our connection with Allah Taala. For how light is the people in the view of Allah when they disobey Him. This is what was said by one of the Sahaba when Persia fell to the Muslims. And he had the crown of the Persian king in his hand. And all of their people who was part of the court of the Persian rulers and everyone around was being led as prisoners of war. He looked at them and he cried. He said, how light they are. How light they are with Allah Taala. How Allah does not even consider them of anything once they disobey him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I have been sent before the hour, be safe with the sword. And my provision has been provided for me under the shade of my spear. And humiliation has been written on anyone who goes against my orders. Humiliation has been written upon anyone who goes against my order. If we want to continue in the position of humiliation that we are in, then don't take the grand opportunity that Ramadan is going to present. Act like it doesn't exist. Neglect and forget. Be hard-headed, obstinate, follow your desires like many of us have been doing for the last 11 months and don't benefit from Ramadan. And when our circumstance doesn't change, when the kuffar don't remove their feet from our necks, when our women are consistently raped as they are nowadays in many places of the world, when all of that happens, don't say why. You know why. Because you need a Ramadan. And you need to correct yourself in that Ramadan. And that you are a part of this ummah. And if you have an illness, if you are a member of the ummah with an illness, with a sickness, with filth, with crime, with sin, then it affects the rest of the ummah. Just as if your body, if you had an illness in your finger or your toe, affects the rest of your body. And it doesn't have to be said to you that the Prophet ﷺ said that the believers are like jasad and wahid, one body. One body. So if we want to correct the position of the ummah, then we must first start with correcting ourselves. Don't worry about Zay or Ubay. Don't worry about anybody else but yourself. Be selfish this Ramadan. Not regarding giving sadaqah, 
But self is regarding where you're going to place your focus or rectification of how to rectify yourself. Your focus is going to be on yourself. Not worrying about if this person or that person is on the minhaj. Are you on the minhaj? And then the, the brother on bid'ah sunnah. Are you up on sunnah? Have the brother stopped committing that sin? Have you stopped committing your sins? Has the brother made toba? Have you made toba? Has the brother corrected his situation? Have you corrected your situation? Worry about yourself. Worry about yourself this Ramadan. My sincere advice to you this Ramadan, worry about yourself. Am I backbiting? Am I slandering? Am I committing fahisha? Am I committing ghiba? Am I committing amima? Do I have hasad? Do I have pride, kibber? Am I arrogant? Am I too harsh? Am I unkind? Am I not gentle enough? Am I gentle enough? Question yourself. Was my intention when I said what I said and when I did what I did, the pleasure of Allah ought to be noticed? When I spoke, when I spoke, it was for the pleasure of Allah ought to be seen or heard. Was I doing a khalis and min qalbi, sincerely from my heart, or do I want to be known? Hubb al-dhuhur, loving to be known, breaks the backs. Be mukhlis, be sincere. Be like that servant of Allah that is in the hadith that is related in the book of Kitab al which is authentic, this hadith of the soldier whose head is disheveled and who's barefooted and dirty, but he's sincere to Allah. If he's placed in the rear of the army, he's pleased with that. And if he's placed in the front of the army, he's pleased with that. His goal is Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Not where I sit, not us and them, not you and I, but his brothers and sisters. It's the servants of Allah. It's the believers. It's the Muslims. It's the Salafiyun. It's Ahl al Athar. It's Ahl al Sunnah. It's Ashab al Hadith. No one's bigger and no one's lower. And no one wants to step over anyone or should desire that. All of us should be working for the pleasure of Allah. Ta'ala. And if we don't, we have an illness which is riyah, doing things to be seen, or sum'ah, doing things to be heard, and we need a Ramadan to correct that behavior. If we're finding that we talk to sisters too much, we need a Ramadan to learn to stop talking to those who's not halal for us to talk to. If we find that we're mixing too much, we need a Ramadan to stop mixing with those who we're not supposed to mix with. We find that there's jealousy in our heart, vengeance in our heart, distrust in our heart for other Muslims based upon nothing but what shaitan whispers to us or what our nafs wants. We need a Ramadan. We got all the good in front of us when we have the book of Allah Ta'ala and the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the fahm salaf salih and a connection to the inheritance of the prophet salam, the ulama we got all good in front of us but we're like that individual who has a disease and has the prescriptive medicine right in front of him but he refuses to open the package let alone read it let alone take it we need a ramadan our condition won't change we need a ramadan We'll continue to complain. We need a Ramadan. We'll be forever in pain. We need a Ramadan. We'll go insane. We need a Ramadan. You and I. And why can't we lift up, roll up our sleeves? Why we have to beat the hands of one another? Why we have to step on somebody to get somewhere? Why do we have to step on our brother? He wants to go to the same place you want to go. The Jannah. Why can't we do it together? Why can't we be side by side? You roll up your sleeves and I roll my sleeves and we get busy and we help and support one another. Why can't we make excuses? Why can't we forgive? Why can't we forget? Why can't we let things go? 
Why can't we let things go? My dharma, as long as we're up on bayana clarity. We're not saying let things go at the expense of clarity. Upon clarity. Knowing the haq. Knowing the sunnah. Knowing the deen. Connected to the scholars. Not preceding them in any statement or action. And if they make a statement, we make their statement. We don't add our own. This is important. We need a Ramadan. That blessed month that you can go in and you are baqil, selfish miser, come out jawad, generous. That blessed month, you can be one of those hard-hearted brothers that everybody slams you with a smile, but you never give nobody a smile. You'll come out of Ramadan if you do it right, smiling in the faces of your brothers. Not in the faces of your sisters, in the faces of your brother. We need a Ramadan to correct our condition. We're slow. We're lazy. We don't have any incentive towards deen and akhirah, the hereafter. Our incentive is towards dunya. And if the opposite of that was true, most of this neighborhood around here would be Muslim. The opposite of that true with the amount of Muslims here in this state alone, no Muslim would seem strange. Many will enter Islam in foes. As Sheikh Zaid al Makhali Havidullah said in his explanation of Surah Talatah, that Islam, if the Mahasin, the beauty of it is explained. Islam, he said, is a mu'ajiza min al mu'ajizad. It is a miracle of the miracles, Islam. Mu'ajiza min al mu'ajizad. Islam is a miracle of the miracles. Mu'ajizah, ayah, min al-ayat, miracle of the miracles. It is that when it is presented to the heart, when it is presented to people, and is done in the right way, what happens? They enter the Islam afwajan, in the multitudes, in the multitudes. He said, if one of us has a business and we want to advertise, he said, very few would not advertise at all, say, I have a business, but I'm going to be silent. His business won't be successful. No one will benefit. He will lose. And like this. Generally, the business person gets a good advertisement. He may use the print media. He may use the radio, audio media. He may use television, whatever to get his advertisement, his da'wah, his call out, so that the people will come. And he mentions it in the most beautiful way. And it has the most beautiful of expressions. This is what he does. The sheikh said, if we were to do that with Islam, if we were to do that with Islam, show its beauty, explain its mahas and its beauty, it is the natural fitra of the person, unless his fitra has been polluted, that he wants Islam. He wants to know why he's here upon earth. He wants to know his creator. He wants to have a connection with his creator. He wants to know the purpose of his existence. But who will explain it to him or her? Who will tell them? Who will open up those hearts? It's supposed to be us. Those of us who can't express ourselves. What about our actions? If the person sees you're truthful, why are you truthful? Because Islam teaches truth that you must be truthful. And that it's a high martaba being truthful. A siddiqiyya or being I mean a siddiqi is the only martaba, the only level that's after the prophets. First level that's after the prophets, rather. Closest to the prophet's station is those who are the siddiqi, the most truthful. So you be truthful because of that. You keep your word because of that. You are gentle. You are nice. You have good behavior. You have good etiquette. You have good deportment. They come to Islam. They come to Islam afwajin, brothers. So if you don't see them doing it, it's because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. If we were doing what we were supposed to do, we would probably have to have this type of fundraiser at one of those football stadiums. 
if we were doing what we were supposed to do, the people would hear Islam upon the radio. They would see articles written in the papers regularly. They would see good behavior. They would see kindness and gentleness and patience and forbearance. They would see the qualities and characteristics of Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we was on our job. But we're not. We're not. Not the male or the female. Not father or mother or child. We're not on what we're supposed to be upon. We're not on what we're supposed to be doing. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan to clarify our situation. We need a Ramadan to heal our condition. We need a Ramadan to put us in position. We need a Ramadan to give this Ummah a rebirth. To give this Ummah air. This Ummah is like someone lying and the ambulance comes and the workers get out and they place something over the mouth and they start beating at their heart. We need to understand that we don't sit here in Newark, New Jersey, but we're global. That who's ever upon the book of Allah and the son of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the men of Salah Salah, then they're our closest brother. And whoever ignorant and upon innovation that is not mukaffara, then they're our brother from a distance, but they're still within this ummah. So it affects all of us. And we are connected in that way. As long as you're sitting there saying, well, India, and what they do to the Muslims in India, that don't concern me. In Afghanistan, I don't care if they bomb it off the planet. That ain't got nothing to do with me. Then you're a phony. You're a racist. You're a nationalist. You're not a Salafi. You're not a Salafi. Salafi is concerned about this ummah. Salafi at night thinks about this ummah. Salafi cries in a salat about the condition of this ummah. He cries about the condition of those locally, and he cries about the condition of those internationally. We need a Ramadan so that we can realize Islamic Brotherhood again. We need a Ramadan because some of us have never practiced Islamic Brotherhood in his life and may have been Muslim 15 years. We need a Ramadan so that the sisters learn sisterhood. We need a Ramadan so that we focus on the Akhirah and the hereafter and we give nasiha and advice to one another that is a benefit and our talking and mixing is just not about dunya and what you want to do in dunya and how you're going to be in dunya. We need a Ramadan so that people learn to inculcate in their children to be another Khalid Mualid and before that Abu Bakr Sadiq, Umar Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Talib, Salim Abi Waqqas and like this. We need a Ramadan that inspires our children. Maybe I should study knowledge. This Ummah needs another Bin Baz. This Ummah needs another Al Albari. This Ummah needs another Muqbil. This Ummah needs another Ibn Uthaymain. This Ummah needs another Muhammad Aman al Jami. This Ummah needs another Hamoud al Tawajri. This Ummah needs another Umar Falata. This Ummah needs another Abdul Razak Afifi. This Ummah needs another Hamar Ansari. This Ummah needs all of those and more. You're going to tell me that none of them can come or no one like them can come from our lineage, our families. None of them can come from us. Everybody that comes from us got to be goofy. No one can come from us. None of our children can speak the Arabic language with talaqa at a young age. None of us can put in the hands of our children books that would be beneficial to the ummah, have and have a love that cannot be imagined for reading them. The same love that these kufar have for Harry Potter and their imaginary books. Our hope is low. Our goal or our desire is low. We low. We're supposed to have high goals. And we're supposed to be looking at Abdullah, the Rahman of our children saying, you might be Sheikh Nasser for this Ummah. We're supposed to say, I'm listening to Hudayfi and Sudais and Shuraim, but that could be you leading the Salat in the Haram. 
We're supposed to have high goals. But until we brush off the dust, the foolishness of the jahiliyyah, the hastiness of youth, and that doesn't have to do with age, even if you're 70 years old and you're hasty, bumping into this and falling to that, creating confusion, then you're hasty. The hastiness of youth, the bad characteristics that we have, we got to get rid of them. We got to change our condition. Change our condition. Change our condition. We need a Ramadan. We need a Ramadan. We need Qiyam at night. We need recitation of Quran. We need to sit together and talk together only about deen. We've talked enough about dunya. We need to worry about our status in the akhirah, in the hereafter. We need to wake up. Wake up, O sleepy one. Wake up, O sleepy one. Your slumber has been too long. You got to wake up. Get yourself a wudu. Place yourself in pocket. Get within the line. The caravan of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Bakr al-Sadiq. Umar ibn Khattab, Umar ibn Affan, Ali ibn Talib. You got to get with it. You got to get with Ibn Taymiyyah, Al-Zahabi, Ibn Al-Qayyim, Al-Jawziyah, Al-Shawkani, Muhammad al-Wahhab. You got to get with it. You got to get with Abdul Aziz bin Baz, Muhammad Asrin al-Albani, Ibn Al-Taymain. You got to get with it. How long are we going to stay asleep? How long are we going to stay sick? How long are we going to be unsettled? How long are we going to have our problems? How long are we not going to have unity? How long are we going to have problems? We need a Ramadan. And let this Ramadan be one that when you come out of it, you come out of it running. You come out of it striving. You come out of it better. You come out of it committed. You come out of it devoted. You come out of it with your head held high. You're from the Umar of Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And don't you forget it. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabiya Muhammad.